Coach Canales actually spoke about the decision, and we'll let you kind of decide whether or not you think it was a Tepper decision or if it was GM head coach decision. Yeah, it's a lot of those factors, and again, I hate to sound like a broken record, I just, I owe it to all of the guys, the coaches, the staff, the players, everybody involved to be really critical about what we put on film, about what I'm seeing, and to make sure that I'm constantly making the best decision for the team every week. Um, and it happens to be the quarterback position, and so it's loaded um, that way, but it's every position, and it's all the guys, and um, I was able to stand in front of the team and challenge all the guys, that we all have to step up our passion for what we're doing, to play with the play style that we're looking for. A lot of I am in there, right, when he's talking about the culture that he is trying to set uh, on the team. He said there's a standard, there's a standard, and obviously the quarterback's going to be talked about more because what comes with that position, but I need to be able to stand in front of the team and say, hey, you got to be able to produce or you're not going to have a job. Him saying to the team, like, we're going to move on to Andy Dalton because the production from our number one overall pick yeah. just over a year ago is not to the standard that we were trying to find here, and that is for every position. Some people want to be a Panther, some people won't be Panthers. That's just how the future looks here. I think that's very empowering probably for a coach to be able to make that move, especially to a number one overall pick and to a new general manager being able to make that move from the ownership of David Tepper. So congrats to Tepper taking his hand seemingly yeah, here we go. off the wheel. But with that being said, they definitely came into that building and said we have no loyalty to anything that happened in this building before we got here. That is why you were hiring us. How do you feel about the move, AQ Shipley? Yeah, I think you nailed it right there. They, they are not tied at the hip one bit to Bryce Young. And so they were going to test it out for a couple weeks, and clearly it has looked bad. I'm sure there's more pieces to that puzzle, but he has looked bad, and they are not going to ride their coattails with him. They're going to go with Andy Dalton. Now all that does right there with what he just said is put more pressure on everybody else on that offense. Obviously Andy can go out and just kind of free wing it, but now it's now the eyes are on the offensive line. Now the eyes are on everybody else too, which you know it can be really interesting you moving talk, forward. You talked about it too, the, the – the panic, you know, that comes in. Hey, you don't want to start 0-3. And the 0-2, the it was ugly. It's one thing to be 0-2, but it's one another thing to be 0-2 and, and not even be competitive. Even on that team in Indy those years ago, like, you guys were competitive. I feel like in a lot of those games, yeah. it came down to, like, fourth quarter. It games. wasn't like you were, you know, four – five touchdowns. Had hope. Losses. Had hope in a lot of those games. So when you're coming in and you don't have hope, you got to keep that locker room, especially if you're a new head coach. You can't just be saying a song and dance and – trotting out the same guy and it always starts with the quarterback once again that was a good roster lost the quarterback for the season didn't have a chance you got a guy on the roster Andy Dalton who we know can play good NFL football not sure about that with Bryce Young haven't seen it so I, I like the move and I like the ownership that it seems like Canales is taking with it which leads me to a great question about Bryce Young because obviously you were benched you actually gave a uh, tweet to a shout out to Tom Coughlin for benching you in the time that he did and how he handled it with transparency and it made you the person you were and looking back on it you appreciate that situation the amount of adversity in your life I feel like really propelled you to become the player and human that you are so all those bad situations led to obviously a great outcome for Bryce Young being yeah. benched here week two of his second year with a brand new coaching staff brand new general manager how'd you feel about the news whenever you heard it and uh what do you think this means for Bryce Young I mean you know first and foremost it's obviously not not easy I mean, um, Bryce Young there. you know it's, it's one of those things that it's it's a tough situation to get benched at any point in time uh in your career whether you've had success whether you're a new guy so it's tough um, but A, if you look at the decision, the first thing you look at is the fact that he hasn't played good football. And you wonder if he was ready to be able to handle everything that goes into being a starting quarterback in the National Football League. And we've seen this a lot over the last few years of guys getting thrown in there before they're ready. And they're asked to, you know, be competitive. They're asked to try to carry a team that's not very good um, while learning how to play in the National Football League. And so... It's obvious when you watch the tape that uh, that Bryce wasn't ready to handle all that goes into it. And, you know, Bryce was in a unique situation because a lot of times we get these young quarterbacks that are great athletes um, and, and can run around and create and have these big arms. They can make up for things with their athletic ability. Bryce isn't one of those guys. And so uh, he's got to win with processing and getting the ball out on time and having good technique to make sure that he's accurate with his throws. And those are all things that he's struggling with right now. The ball comes out too late. His technique is hurting him in terms of getting the ball out on time. 
You couple that with a team that's not great around him that can't, you know, cover up some of those issues. And you can understand from a football perspective why they made this move. I think the other side of it, too, is to to maybe see this as a situation where it was needed for Bryce Young, the person, the expectations, what he's been asked to do. Uh, AQ was just talking about that, you know, just the idea of, you know, all the pressure on him. And now it gets deflected a little bit to to other people. And so, uh, you know, now you're in a situation where, okay, it's not all about me being the savior. He can step back. He can step away from the expectations. And then, you know, you've got to internally look at yourself and go, okay, what part in this did I have, right? It's easy to go, well, they didn't believe in me and it's only two games and all of this stuff. But when I was in those situations, I always had to ask myself, okay, why? Was there something that I was accountable for that I wasn't doing well enough that I need to be better at for the next time around so I can put my best foot forward and and I can hold on to this job and I can live up to the expectations that I set for myself and the organization sets for me. And so I'm hoping this is a chance for Bryce to step back and to learn and grow because one of the hardest things to do is to learn the game and learn how to play against the best athletes in the world on Sunday afternoons uh, with those kind of expectations. So I understand why they did it from an organizational standpoint. I hope it's a good thing for Bryce Young and he can internalize some of the things he's got to work on. And like we're seeing with some other guys, the Sam Darnolds and the Geno Smiths, the hope is take a step back, grow, learn, become a better player, and then be ready for the next opportunity so you can go in and thrive and show people that you belong as a starting quarterback in the NFL. Hey, go do it, Bryce. Oh, yeah, Bryce. Go do it, Bryce. Now, he was getting to do all that with all that pressure in front of, like, 1,500 people, too. You know, like, that Carolina (laughs) Panthers business. I mean, the whole thing, the whole thing's bad, you know? And I think, like, Canales having the ability to be able to do this and also Dan Morgan in his first year as GM being able to make this move, I think that's a big deal with ownership, too, you know? And uh, hopefully they'll be able to just stay on a path, on a path. Yeah. Just a path for a year or two, and maybe this doesn't, just become a cycle of quarterbacks coming and going because two of those guys you talked about, Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield, they were literally on the Panthers. Baker Mayfield was running rush end yeah. on <laughs> special teams for the Carolina Panthers. Now he's obviously lighting it up for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and I'm sure the boys will have a couple questions about the quarterbacks that you're liking seeing.